Hello, welcome to another video in our how-to series. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to enable auto tracking on your MTZ 2250 or 2250 IR. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is go to the NVR and we are going to right click anywhere on the screen to bring up the quick menu. And so what we need to do first is set a preset to work off of. So we are going to go to right here where it says PTZ, and this is going to bring up the controls for your PTZ. So what you'll want to do is set the camera um, where you're going to want it to always be. Um, in my case, I want it right here because um, I'm going to set a trigger for this walkway. So once you have the camera where you would like it, we're going to hit this arrow icon over on the right. And it's going to give us some more options here. Um, what we're concerned with right now is this little gear icon down here on the bottom right. It says auxiliary config. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now you'll see we have preset, the number, and set or delete preset. So we want it to be a new setting. We're going to select the number that we want this preset to be. So it could be one, two, three, four, five. You know, whichever number you want it. In my case, I don't have that many, so we're just going to leave it at one. Go ahead and click set. And you'll see now that it says preset one. So what this means is that the camera is now always going to look at this area for preset one. So if I move this camera back over here, type in number one here and click preset, it's going to move it back to that preset that we set. So once you have your preset set up, we're going to go ahead and right click to get out of that PTZ menu. Right click again to bring up the quick menu and go down to main menu. Then we are going to go down here to the settings row to event. And then you want to be on video detection and the motion detection tab. Next thing we want to do is select the channel that the camera is on. In my case, it's on channel two. Then you want to click enable to enable motion detection. We want it to go ahead and record this channel. So we'll select that. Click apply to save our settings. Then the next thing we need to do is go here to smart plan. Select our channel. Again, it's going to be D2 for me. Select the preset. So if you had multiple presets, you'd need to make sure that you select um, the one that you want these rules to be applied to. So in my case, we only have one, so we're just going to select one. Then go ahead and click Add. And you'll see that we have a new smart plan. Um, you also see down here at the bottom, we have two icons, a light bulb, which is the IVS, and the face detection. We want the light bulb to be yellow. So if it's not, if you see something like this, or if this one's highlighted, deselect it and select the light bulb. So as long as the light bulb is yellow like this, you should be good. So we once we have our new smart plan, we'll go ahead and click apply, save our settings. Now the next thing we need to do is go to IVS and create a new IVS rule. So again, we want to make sure we're on the correct channel and we're going to click add to add a new rule. And you'll see now that we have rule one by default, it's tripwire and we have draw and trigger. So we can change the type. You have a couple different options to use with um, auto tracking. Um, so you can use either tripwire or intrusion. Um, in my opinion, tripwire is probably the best for this. Um, I will show you how intrusion works, um, but let's just go ahead and do a tripwire to start with. So we'll leave that out tripwire. Then we're going to click this little pencil icon underneath draw. So now you're going to see another little box pop up and we have the view of our camera. So the first thing we want to do is go up here to where it says preset and we want to select our preset, which in our case is preset one. Now to draw the rule, you're going to left click 
and then you can drag out your line, left click again at the end of the line, and you can continue, you can draw out another, you know, another line here. In my case, I just want one line. So I will right click to complete the line. And you'll now see that there is a line with two arrows. So what those two arrows mean is that this, um, this rule will trigger anytime someone walks from either side of this line. So if they cross this way, it'll trigger. If they cross this way, it'll trigger. You can change that over here where it says direction. If we put it for A to B, for instance, now it will only trigger when someone walks across the line this way. So if they come from over here and go over here, it will trigger. But it won't trigger if they come from this side and go back across to this side. In my case, I want it to trigger either way, so we will leave it on both. You can also name your rules, so um, if you want to put multiple lines in here, um, you can do that as well, and you don't want to get them mixed up, you can go ahead and give this guy a name. So we can just name it walk. And once you have that, you can just go ahead and click OK. And so now we have that rule. So now we can create another rule. We can just go ahead and click Add. And it's going to add another one in there. And now I'll show you how the intrusion rule works. So if we change this to intrusion, click on Draw. And you'll see we have that same box again. So we'll go ahead and make sure our preset is preset 1. Now, if we left click, We'll see that we can draw out a line, but this one we need to we need to draw out a box. So if you just go ahead and left click on this corner, left click on this corner, left click here, left click at the end of our box, and right click to complete. Now we have this box, and so how intrusion works is that it's going to look for um, a change within this box. So if anything moves inside of this box, it's going to trigger. Um, this can be useful. Um, I find it not that useful, especially if you have shadows. This is definitely not the way to go. Um, because what's going to happen is that every time a shadow moves or, say, these leaves blow, um, your PTZ is going to detect that motion and it's going to lock onto it and attempt to track it. Um, so if you have a lot of movement that's not necessarily people, then your PTZ is always going to be looking down here at the ground, which you don't necessarily want. Um, but it is an option. You know, there are certain cases where that could be useful. Um, in my case, I don't want that, but we'll go ahead and click OK. And you'll see we now have two rules. So you can make as many rules as you like in here. Um, I wouldn't do too many or your PTC is going to be going crazy all the time. But we could, you know, we could add another tripwire in here, um, say over here by the street. So we'll go ahead and click on draw again. And we'll go ahead and select our preset, preset one. And we'll left click to begin our line, move it over, left click at the end of it, and right click to complete it. And we can change this name and we'll put this one, we'll make it street. Enter and OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete this intrusion. So we just have our two tripwires. Now, the other thing that we want to check, as you see here where it says trigger, we have this little gear icon. So if you click that, you see we have some other options here. What we're concerned with is down here where it says track. We want to make sure that this is checkmarked. Um, it should be by default, but I always like to check and make sure. Um, as long as this is checkmarked, then that means when that rule is triggered, so when something crosses that tripwire, the PTZ is going to track it. Um, 
you also have this track time here. Um, by default, it sets to 30 seconds. And what this is going to control is the amount of time that the camera is going to track, attempt to track the object after it has lost it. So once the object goes out of the view of the camera, it will attempt to search to try to find it. Um, after a certain amount of time, it says, okay, it's gone and reverts back to the preset. Um, so if you're finding that, you know, it's tracking something, they're gone, they're out of the view of the camera and the camera is going all sorts of crazy trying to find it. And you feel like it's doing that for too long, you can drop this number and it's going to drop the amount of time that it searches. Um, or you could, you know, also up the number um, if you wanted to look for a little bit longer. Um, anyway, we just mainly want to make sure that that is checked. And we'll go ahead and click OK. Now we can go ahead and apply our settings. And you'll see we now have two blue lines in our scene here. So now if I go out and walk across one of these lines, you'll see that the camera is going to lock on to me and it will follow me. So I'm going to go out and do that and I will be right back. Okay, so you see that the camera locked onto me, it tracked me, and then when it was not able to find me, it continued to look around to re, to find that object again. Once the um, lapsed amount of time went by, it returned back to its original position. Um, so that is how you set up the auto tracking. Um, I hope this was helpful. Um, as always, if you run into any issues and it's not working the way you think it should or it's not working at all, um, feel free to give us a call. Um, we're always here to help. Um, our number is 888-508-3110. Or you can always check out our wiki page, um, our support page. If you go to monoview.com and click on support, there's a lot of great useful information there as well.